Britain has pledged more than £700 million to help the world's poorest countries tackle climate change. The UN Green Climate Fund is designed to help developing countries adapt to climate change and get clean energy. Critics say the cash would be better spent on flood defences in the UK. Our environment analyst Roger Harubin reports. Those most at risk from climate change have done least to cause the problem. I visited Bangladesh where people are so poor they live on a temporary sand island in a river. They're building earth platforms to protect their homes from rising waters. British aid money helps them buy food to get the energy to protect themselves. Not all climate aid is this well spent, but governments that have done most to cause climate change are pledging to help the poorest. The UK is going to put up to £720 million, uh, which is part of our development budget, existing money, alongside the Americans, the Japanese, the Germans, the French and 13 other countries to support this Green Climate Fund, which is going to help the poorest and most vulnerable in the world. But places like Gateshead in Northumberland suffer floods too. And Britain's own flood defences need more cash. So should we invest in ourselves before we help others? At one time I would have said, you know, great help other people, but I don't think we're in a position to now. I think climate change is really important, so it should be spent equally. I think more money should be spent in this country than abroad. But the greenhouse gas emissions expected to make floods worse are a shared worldwide problem. The money being pledged today is a vital step towards a global deal on climate change due next year. We need to help developing countries to leapfrog the dirty energy path that rich countries like ours took and go straight to clean energy like solar and wind. And here's how some of the aid cash will be spent. Smoke from inefficient cooking stoves in India kills women and children. Clean burn cook stoves funded by aid programmes protect the women and the climate. Roger Harabin, BBC News.